Hello? Hi, Hello. Just getting a couple more things in line and getting ready to go. Thank you. You should have the control now. Ooh. All right. Sorry, everybody. It's just taking us a minute to get this all put together. I understand. Do you want to do housekeeping? Um. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Allison Weir. Um, we're thrilled to um, invite you to our third webinar on diaper drives, uh, getting diapers, and raising awareness. And we are um, very pleased that Jennifer Losey, the um, our senior board member of the National Diaper Bank Network and board member of the Diaper Bank of Southern Arizona, the oldest diaper bank in the country, and the um, probably the most successful diaper bank runs um, primarily on diaper drives, uh, is here to present her knowledge of over 10 years of uh, diaper drives um, with everyone. Jennifer, take it away. Thank you, Allison. Um, I'm, I'm excited to do this today, but a little bit nervous because it's my first webinar. Um, like Allison said, I'm a board member of the National Diaper Bank Network. I'm also a board member of the Diaper Bank of Southern Arizona. I'm just finishing my final year with them. Um, I have participated in more than 10 years of community-wide diaper drives where you involve the entire community in raising hundreds of drives throughout um, a period of time. And I personally have hosted um, dozens of drives over the years at this point. So a diaper drive at its most fundamental is very similar to food drives, except it's for diapers. Um, unlike food, diapers can't be brought can't be bought with food stamps or WIC or any other um, SNAP or um, government assistance programs. And as many of you are aware of this already, and in a diaper drive, donors will basically be um, purchasing the packages of diapers and bringing them to you. Now you have very little control over what they bring you typically, um, at least that's our experience in Southern Arizona, although you certainly can direct them to certain sizes um, and certain brands if that's um, something that's important to your area. Diaper drives can be run um, virtually through Amazon. You can do an online diaper drive, which um, we have uh, Help a Mother Out in California. Runs uh, a great deal of virtual diaper drives. In fact, that's how they got their start, I believe. Um, you can also use uh, fundraising tactics to uh, drive your diaper drives on to a much larger uh, community-wide initiative if you want. Um, all these things are still considered diaper drives where the primary focus is to bring in diapers that can then be donated to partner organizations. So in the last three years, 5.9 million American babies were born into um, under the poverty line or to low-income families. Um, and as we all know, diapers cost an average of $100 a month. And so clearly this is a great need, and we all know why we're doing this. Now it's about getting everyone else to know why we're doing this as well and getting them involved in diaper drive. Please let me know if I, I go too, quick, too quickly by just raising your hand in the participation window. All right, so one of the first things you want to do before you decide that, you know, your community needs diapers is to find organizations that can take those diapers and that have that need themselves. And we like to refer to those groups as partner agencies. If there isn't a diaper bank already in your area, you can reach out to organizations like women's shelters, um, the, the local food banks, the food pantries, churches, uh, health groups. Um, even our public health department receives diapers from us locally in Southern Arizona. Uh, daycares, senior centers if you're choosing to go beyond just um, infants and children. And find partners that really understand what it is that you're doing and that are willing to get on board with um, helping to solve this most basic need and the fact that there is a diaper gap. There is clearly more need than we're able to raise diapers for.
So what Southern Arizona did when we first got started is we ran a community-wide diaper drive. And what we did was in the month of December, we contacted our local radio station, which is the family-friendly radio station, and basically um, got three partner agencies at the time and said, how many diapers do you need? And let's spend the entire month of December kind of talking about that. And then we did a radio remote from a local park and had people at the end of the month bring their diapers and drop them off and tell why they were interested in what motivated them to be involved. In the meantime, the diaper banking team, which at that point we weren't quite yet a diaper bank, we were more a diaper program, um, and what we were doing was running around town to corporations and churches and school groups and telling them about what we were doing and asking them to host a diaper drive. So the more community support that you can gather in this, um, the, better, the better that it makes that remote at the end of the month. Um, so our first drive, I think, raised about 35,000 diapers. And now our annual drive we do with a radio play, like an old-time radio play around Christmas still. And the radio talks about us during the month of December. Um, and essentially, we, we are now able to bring in around 150,000 just in the month of December. And those drives then continue throughout the year until um, I think last year we distributed around 588,000 diapers, mostly through diaper drives, very little through purchase. Um, so what you'll need to be prepared for is all the diapers that you're going to be getting. <laughs> you need to find some drop-off locations. You need to promote those drop-off locations. And you'll find that lots of businesses are very interested in supporting um, a local collection box for you. And so all we do is we take um, uh, U-Haul boxes and wrap them with baby paper um, for like baby showers um, or whatever the holiday may be that you'd like to promote um, during that time period. Mother's Day and Father's Day is a great time to do drives as well. Um, so know the sizes that each partner agency needs or is going to um, request from you so that you can start by promoting that in those um, locations. Find the groups that you want to um, serve as your drop-off locations, and then tell them what it is that they need to do once those diapers come in, whether that's to call you or to call the agency themselves. Make sure that you build in the way that you plan to count those diapers, because sometimes what will happen is the drop-off location will call the partner agency directly, and you'll never know how many diapers came in. We had that happen very early on. Um, the other thing is, is that those local organizations, and we partner with all the UPS stores in town, that's been our big one, and several moving companies as well. And we have about 25 locations within a five-county area that we're working with um, on a regular basis. And what they do is they call us um, so that we can go and, and pick them up. And the more people that are involved in this and that learn about it, uh, the better off you'll be when it comes time to um, ask them to renew their diaper drive again for next year. You can reach out to your local community foundation or your United Way for assistance in locating strong organizations that will do good work with the diapers that are being donated. Because there's nothing worse than hearing that your local electric company ran a drive for you and then you donated them to a local organization that it turns out is selling the diapers. <laughs> probably not a good thing, and that also has happened to us. Come on, slide. There we go. All right, so when you're talking to your community um, drop-off location, you want to um, check with your grocery stores, particularly the ones that you have a local stake in. They're the ones that are going to have uh, the most amount of people coming through. Retail stores, of course. Radio and TV stations are great because it also gives your folks a chance to come in, and sometimes they'll do a spot um, promotion for you if somebody's coming in and dropping off diapers. Uh, Faith-based organizations, of course. Uh, local businesses. I'm trying to think of who else we work with. Oh, we work with Subways, and we work with uh, Sleep America. There's some really good ones that are willing to do it, um, if not all year, at least during your community diaper drive. Um, ask the owners and managers if they're willing to host a collection box and if they're willing to promote it. Promote it in their store promotions, promote it through their newsletters, let folks know. 
Um, create a drop-off location package that's going to include a letter describing what diaper need is, why are we doing this, and how you're planning to meet that need. Um, figure out what your gap is going to be, or at least what you think the anticipated need for your community will be with the diapers. In addition, describe the relationship you plan to have with them. When will you pick up? Who should they let know that they have diapers at their location, or should they be driving and dropping them off to you? If you ask them, most of them are willing to drive the diapers to you. Um, the only thing is, is that there are certain sudden rushes of diapers. Someone will find a sale and they will go and spend a couple thousand dollars and you will have, you know, several thousand diapers sitting at your local UPS store and they will definitely call you to pick up for that. So be prepared for that. Um, and typically, I don't think we've had anything recently that hasn't fit in a minivan size uh, vehicle for pickup. But working with a moving company is the most fabulous thing that you can possibly do is to get them to donate two pickups per month. Um, additional community partners included, you know, of course, uh, publicizing the drives are your TV and radio. And don't just think of the big ones. Think also of your, your local Christian radio channel, your, um, your local access, public access channels, your um, public media, your newspapers, your town bloggers, of course, um, and community bulletins. And I don't know. Um, that every community has like local business networks and things of that nature. Is there a question? Anybody else popping on? All right. All right. So hosting a diaper drive. So essentially, community-wide diaper drives, the point of them is to get lots of small drives going and people dropping off packages of diapers. Hosting diaper drives is really one of the most impactful ways that you can involve someone in your mission. The Food Bank has been doing it for years. It's not just about hunger. It's about expressing to someone how hunger really exists and how they can make an immediate impact. So by hosting a diaper drive, you're basically getting everyone involved in that diaper drive to go to the store and to buy a package of diapers, to experience what it must be like for our clients to stand in the diaper aisle and say, oh my gosh, look at how expensive diapers are. So that's one of the most key pieces in hosting diaper drives, is to educate those participating in the expense of diapers, and most importantly, giving them that feeling of immediate impact. So finding diaper drive hosts, um, there is a ton of places where, where we have had diaper drives. Schools are a huge one. Schools get it very early on. They are, they are a quick win, a low-hanging fruit for most communities to go out, contact your school. Particularly charter schools, they're a little bit more flexible and, and, and willing to participate um, at different times of year. You don't need typically a year of planning to work with them. Um, businesses, of course, just promoting it through flyers um, and getting them to challenge each other. So if two subways are involved um, in hosting drives and they're asking just their employees to participate and they have a goal of 500 diapers, which is about, um, what, 10, 20 packages, anywhere between 10 and 20 packages. So what you would be doing is basically asking this subway to challenge that subway. And that is really when you drive your employees um, in your organizations to do their best work, and you will have the best results when they are involved in challenges. Civic organizations like Girl Scouts, Junior League, and Rotary, this is a way to have far-reaching fingers. All right. Faith-based organizations like churches are also fantastic at making up gap differences. So if they don't feel like they've hit their numbers with their diaper contributions, they often will reach out by writing you a check as well. And you want to make that clear that that's always an option for moment no, one. If folks aren't able, well, I think we've got a little bit of background noise. Is everybody muted? Right. All right. 
Um, so make it clear from the beginning whether you are or are not accepting financial contributions. And if you are accepting financial contributions, what that's going to be paying for. If it's not paying for diapers, if it is paying for facility costs, let them know that up front so they can decide what they're going to be doing with their money for you. Um, hey, Allison. Every, everyone, could you um, please uh, mute your line? Uh, is there a peak time of the year that y'all have more requests? Oh, it, it sounds well, like uh, a yes. question. Do we want to I'm sorry, like was that show? question you were asking if there was a time of year that we really peak on diaper drives? That's what, Steve, and, that's what Steve told me. Yes, the, the answer to that is yeah. yes. Um, we run our drives in December, um, and we do a kickoff event on December 2nd or 3rd. Time of second or third of the month, like, usually. Um, and what we do then is spend the entire month of December. People, you know, as with financial contributions, are most generous in the holiday season when other organizations are also out promoting their um, needs and their events, and it makes for for better tie-ins. You know, it looks like there's more going there in uh, September and uh, summer for diapers. I'm like, that's weird. That's strange. Can you repeat that? And they're going over you all in the winter. Samuel, could you repeat that, or are you having another conversation? Sounds like he's having another conversation. I think he's moved on to another conversation. <laughs> can we, I think, Jennifer, in order, you can, because you are in control of this meeting, actually mute everybody. Like that? You can. In that little participate um, element, there's a... a if you go over everybody's um, name, there's a little microphone yeah. you can hit. Um, farther over to the participants. Oh, wait. Looks like I can do it. No. no I was going to say, I don't have that control. Okay. It looks like I'm going to be able to do it. I'm working on it. Let me see if I can. Okay. I'm working on it. Go ahead, Jen. All right. No problem. Mike delivered uh, uh, think, almost so, yeah. no pallet of adult diapers that he's had over the Haven, which will be going to the school set. Yeah. Which will be going to the I can't mute him. you got to watch. Uh-oh. He's trying to unmute it. Now I can. Daniel? All right. Go, go. go. All right. All right, so one of the things that we found is most motivating, particularly with school groups, churches, and um, clubs, is to pick a theme. So a theme can help you generate excitement about your drive, and it can be simple, like moms helping moms, or you can get a classic theme, so it's baby shower decorations. Um, Seattle has a great one where they do, uh, they do a community-wide drive, and they do a stuff the bus event uh, where folks donate enough diapers um, over a period of time to fill an entire bus. And some of the themes, sorry, my control's a little, there we go. Some of the examples of some themes um, are diaper safaris, you can do jungle decorations, rock and roll, Girl Scout troops get really into this. In fact, they supplied most of um, these particular themes for us over the last several years. And if you go to the Diaper Bank of Southern Arizona website, it includes the 101 um, diaper drive ideas. In fact, I will get that to Joanne so that it can get posted on the national or reformatted to look like the national. Just <laughs> um, go for diapers if you wanted to do a 70s theme, diaper roundup for Western. Uh, lots of different themes here that you can use with decorations that most people have in their closet from their most recent parties. You can do an Oscar theme. And really it's about reminding people that um, are already headed to a party that they can bring a package of diaper with you as well. In fact, my mom's been hosting a diaper drive that brings in about six or 7,000 diapers a year um, just by asking her um, attendees at her Christmas party to please bring a package of diapers in lieu of a hostess gift. And she sends that out on her invitation. And so um, you can do it for baby showers, birthday parties. My son um, is three years old now, and he's done that for all three of his birthday parties, and he raises about 3,000 diapers a year. So next year I think we'll have to ask for toys. I think he's beyond <laughs> everything now. Yeah, he asked this year, Mommy, where are my presents? You already own everything you need, kiddo. 
right. So you, what you want to do is really inspire people and remind them that they can have a lot of fun doing this. Use a pack and play or a playpen to collect diapers. Use baby themed items. Use directional decorations that lead people to your collection area. Little baby footprints have been hugely successful because it makes people ask, what the heck is going on? And our banks have been phenomenal with doing things like this and decorating an area. Um, uh, they do it throughout the year for us, or some of them do it just seasonally for us. But really what it does is make sure that every client that walks through their door is hearing about your mission and what you're doing to solve this very prevalent problem. Think outside the box, well, and inside the box, I guess, <laughs> and get creative. And please share share these um, these ideas that you have as you're going through these diaper drives because it, it's helpful to those who are just getting started, and it helps those of us who have been doing it for a while to get reinvigorated with your ideas. Um, set a goal. Be very clear what your goal is. We're looking for 30,000 diapers. Then kick down as people are hitting those numbers for you. Post a kickoff event um, to advertise your drive and your goals. Bring everybody out. You know, the United Way has been doing that nationally now for their Days of Sharing campaign. Um, for the last couple of years, and, and they didn't used to do that, and they've had huge successes in just bringing people together, showing them either a quick video or telling them about what it is that they're doing, and then sending everybody out for the day to go do their, their um, projects. And we use a similar model in southern Arizona with our radio play to tell people then, you know, thank you so much for coming to this today and thank you for hearing about us and we really hope that you're going to go back to your homes today and buy a package of diapers and donate and that you're going to host your diaper drive. Advertise your progress as you go along. Send out either daily emails or weekly emails and these are all things that you're going to want to tell your companies. The utility companies do one every year and they're huge. Raytheon does one for us, and they brought in 45,000 diapers. That's our single largest um, corporate donation at one time. And that was actually just the finance department challenged their engineers, and the finance department slaughtered them. They're very generous. <laughs> uh, possible ways to set goals is to set a per-employee person goal. I caution against that, uh, but, but it is one of the ways that organizations like to do that, just so that you make sure that everyone feels included, because in, in Southern Arizona, uh, one in four individuals is born into poverty, and if you just take those numbers up to the working poor, um, you're talking about one in three people probably is in need of diapers rather than able to supply it. So you will reach a saturation point in your community where your community cannot see in any larger numbers. And we've been very static. It's between 500 and 600,000 diapers a year um, in drive. So know when you are starting to reach those numbers, if you've been doing this for a while. But they're so important because some of our major donors now used our, our services years and years ago. And that is a huge, huge thing to say 18 years later. I've made a difference in my life um, because of you giving me a package of diapers when I needed it. And, and they regularly communicate on our behalf now, but it happens because of these diaper drives. They were walking by, heard about us, got a flyer for services on where they could go to receive diapers and learned more about the organization and over time have become very dear friends of ours. Um, and we must have a good dozen of those individuals. Advertise your progress towards reaching your goal as much as you possibly can. Um, set a goal to stuff an office, particularly the boss's office. They really hate that, but the employees really get into it. Building a structure. You can get architects to challenge each other with an architectural design contest. Um, and the food ones have made national news over the last few years. I imagine we could do it with diapers. So I challenge all of you to be that organization that can get two of your architecture groups um, to challenge each other in a good design contest by using diapers. Um, you can build walls, baby buggies, houses, cars, um, logos. We have seen folks who build their logos. Create multi-day donation surprise bowl, like today if you brought in a size six. You know, you win an extra hour of PTO. Some organizations are really good about that stuff. Um, we have an insurance company here that has been doing that every single year. The person who wins, 
who brings in the most diaper gets another full day of PTO. And they, surprisingly, every year the numbers change and their numbers have been growing and growing. Uh, set a poundage goal, but then you have to work someplace with a scale. It keeps freezing on me. There we go. Um, selected start and end date. Diapers will trickle in for what we find is years to come from drives that were motivated years ago. So you'll need to figure out something that, you know, where do you want your diapers to go if you're not doing this full time, if you're not making this a lifestyle, and you don't want diapers in your living room for the rest of your life, figure out how to get those diapers regularly as they come in to go out just as quickly. Otherwise, you'll end up with a warehouse in your homes or in your offices if you don't already have warehouse space. Um, diaper drives should be at least a week long, although it's possible to have a continuous diaper drive. Then you're really just serving more as a drop-off location. Drives allow short bursts of energy into the diaper drive issue versus a collection site is regularly there mostly to promote to people. We have very little activity throughout the year at most of our locations. It's really about the promotion and reminding folks that we are collecting diapers year-round. So keep those two things in mind as you're looking at this. Um, you can also use specific dates on the calendar like a Mother's Day or a Father's Day or any other holiday. Find your volunteers. Diaper drives go, go more smoothly and are way more fun if you have a team in place. Like one person's in charge of promotion, another person's in charge of marketing, another person's in charge of purchasing the prizes, another one's in charge of going around collecting diapers or dropping off, getting the entire team or office involved. Huge difference. Um, and then you're reaching more and more people. So maybe folks that don't want to go to the store and learn how expensive diapers are will write you a check. They haven't had that experience of feeling like the client feels. So you're going to want to try and bring that experience into your diaper drive for those that are not getting the diapers. Because typically one office member will collect everybody's money and then go buy the diapers for you. And you really want to inspire folks to go to that diaper aisle. Um, one of the things that you can do to really bring it home at the end is once a company has done a diaper drive for you, is bring them into your warehouse or bring them in with their diapers, combine them with everybody's diapers from your drive, get them to inventory them, have them deliver them to the organizations, and see the difference they're making. Invite the diaper bank to talk to your agency as their drive is going on and to share some of those fast facts. Uh, we've had huge success with newsletters. Um, it, in, in company newsletter um, through their internet to basically promote the drive throughout a month or throughout the week and to allow them um, the chance to get a fast fact every day so that they experience not just um, a one day push of, and we're doing this hyper drive thing. You really want to create an atmosphere of, of sharing in the drive. All right, spreading the word, encouraging these businesses to conduct drive for drive. Uh, flyers in paychecks particularly with very large companies, um, to include a little flyer in their paychecks for the month that says, we're doing a drive on this date, we really encourage your participation. Um, sending out local sales notices, uh, advertising in newsletters, flyers throughout the organization, bathroom stalls, huge hits. Add a reminder about your drive to your email signatures and encourage all of your employees to do that. Um, Put it on your letterhead for a month, if you make your letterhead every single month, which some organizations do. Yard sign, uh, cafe press, can use your logo, and it doesn't take much to build those things, and it's fairly inexpensive, including coffee mugs and yard signs, all that good stuff. Um, so I would strongly recommend that one. Uh, create a social media site for your drive, like Facebook or a blog, and then link it to your website. Um, that's if you have these things. If not, you can always set up a Facebook page to promote this and then, you know, take it down when you're done. Photos make a huge difference. So taking photos of people donating, taking photos um, as you're dropping them off, going out and meeting with your clients, hearing stories about what the clients who are going to get these diapers are going to um, say about your diaper drive, uh, particularly if this is not your first time doing a drive. Set up transportation. Um, with multiple donation sites around your town so that folks know where they are and publicize them. Make it very easy for them to donate. Uh, you may also need to help 
with transporting them um, to the agency that will be distributing them. But I did mention that we use a moving company locally who donates two pickups a month to us. And then we ask the agencies to come and pick up their own diapers um, once a month as well. And we do have a warehouse. But if you don't, you can still um, have the agencies come and do pickups from your homes or, or wherever else you may be storing your diapers. Um, an individual diaper is never too small, and if you choose to take open packages, you can repackage them um, in emergency packs and put three or four diapers in a supply, and organizations like the American Red Cross can use those for victims of disaster or um, individuals who are not necessarily in a case work process of getting all of their needs met will uh, receive a benefit, and then you're not throwing diapers away. We ask that diapers um, be in their original packaging if we're going to be doing that, and that they only be dropped off at our office, not at one of our collection sites. An individual diaper is not too small. Uh, it, it, it seems small, but when you go to load a minivan, always remember you can break them out of their boxes, boxes because they're in smaller packages inside, still sealed. In fact, you'd be surprised that even Mini Coopers can hold, you know, something like 2,000 diapers in them. Um, with multiple donation sites, oh, sorry, there we go. Um, diaper drives come in all shapes and sizes. We will have organizations thinking they're going to raise thousands of diapers who walk in raising hundreds of diapers. You know, remind them about why we're doing what we're doing, and then it's really about inspiring folks to understand. The most important thing you can do is really get them into the diaper aisle. And I know I've said that multiple times, but it's one of the most important things that we do. And you can learn from each diaper drive how to increase participation in the next one. Make sure you do a debrief with the person who hosted that drive. That is one of the things that made us very successful very early on, is doing debriefs. As people did drive, we asked them to fill out a completion form, and we met with them face-to-face, -face and we asked them, you know, what would you do differently? What was your experience like? And how, how can we do this again in the future with you? And then make sure that they know that you're, you're reading their feedback. Once you've completed your drive, share that with everyone that it's over and that you won and that you know, the partner agencies have won, uh, press releases for local media as records are broken, post it on Facebook, Twitter, wherever else that you have access to post to. And that does it for me. Questions? Let me unmute people. This may just take a minute. You can think of your questions as you're being unmuted. Or you can raise your hand. Okay, everybody who all right, well everybody who um is is able to speak now. Questions or comments um, about things like, that have worked? It's Samuel Samuel has a question. His hand is raised. Yeah, but actually, I have got the local Walmart. Uh, actually, we are like three cities, and all the Walmarts in the area are wanting to actually hold a diaper drive for my new uh, diaper bank. And you were talking about a form, which I have looked at the Southern Arizona Diaper Bank website before. And is that form you're talking about the completion for evaluation? Uh, are we free to look at that and just use that as an example to go by for air? Uh, to put up sure. together for air uh, people that are doing it drives for us. Uh, certainly. Um, in fact, I'd recommend that you check back in another couple of weeks because we actually just had a brand new website and are reworking some of those forms um, to, to better incorporate some of the suggestions that have come in recently. But certainly, whatever you want to stuff from our website, feel free. All right, thank you. I'll mm -hmm. And one thing that you want to think about with Walmart is uh, the particular customers that are coming into Walmart and participating in your diaper drives. You need to be very cautious about where you put your um, your collection bin because we have had in the past, uh, not in Southern Arizona, but in, I know in other diaper banks have experienced this, just as many diapers being donated as are stolen out of the bin. So right. And that's not just at Walmart. No, it's certainly Target, grocery stores, all of those. You need to be very mindful of that. Sorry, I didn't mean to single out Walmart. So, so basically I need to stop by the places that are holding the drives and check on them or 
somebody from my board or somebody check on it maybe once a week or? Certainly. Certainly. And, you know, if it turns out that the customers themselves aren't doing the donations, if it's really more the employees that are doing it, then an employee break room is the best place to have your, your collection site. But if you are trying to promote um, the, the diverse throughout the day um, to customers, then I suggest that you find an advocate within those stores and ask them to bring the diapers in at the end of the day as they're being donated to put them in the back room someplace until you can come by and collect them. Okay. I'll remember that. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions? Um, this is Joanne, and I, I just I'd like to say first off, Jennifer, that was incredibly informative. The the one thing that I would add, and maybe you said this, but I don't recall it, is that you shouldn't be disappointed by any diaper drives. There are times that your diaper drives will be amazing and you will get thousands or tens of thousands or as Jennifer talks about hundreds of thousands of diapers. But I have experienced um, you know, diaper drives that collect three hundred and fifty diapers and they yep. went on for a month. You know, it happens and people are always trying and it's always really important to um, you know, thank people just as much and <laughs> Usually the next time they do it, it's bigger. You know, it takes time for things to catch on. It does, and, and it, it takes years. I mean, this is 18 years to hit these numbers. In those early years, we were doing around thirty to 40,000 diapers annually for at least the first five years. Right. Um, well, thank you, Jennifer, for uh, for that really great uh discussion of, of um, diaper drives, and um, thanks everyone else for joining us. Um, as I said, this uh, will be recorded on the website, and um, we uh, will post, uh, post it, um, we hope, in the next day or two, and we'll let you know where the, when our next webinar will be, um, probably in about a month or so. Thanks again for joining us. So thank you. And did you, uh... Go ahead. All right. So, I'm sorry. Abby, somebody else asking a question now? Did you... Didn't you say we were going to get a copy of the PowerPoint too? Yes, yes. We can send. We'll, we'll send everyone who registered um, a copy of the PowerPoint. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We're gonna we're gonna sign off. Sign off now. Right. Thank Thanks you again, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you all.